Okay, uh, welcome back to a new tutorial series that I would like to start today. Um, and it's different from what I have done before because this is specific to a, um, a certain experiment, in this case Atlas, because I have also started recently with that. And I would like to explain here the fundamental basics of the Atlas software, which is also commonly known as Athena. Maybe you heard about this before. You can use it for uh, different purposes uh, for everything which is related to the Atlas experiment itself. You can use it for particle generation, simulation, reconstruction purposes and so on. You have different branches uh, in this very huge project where you can actually uh, yeah, do certain things with that. Yeah, in this tutorial, I will start with the fundamental bas basics, how to access this program, how to generate particles. So it means basically how to use it for production. Then later, I will also go in detail how you can uh, write your own packages for Athena, how to compile that using CMake and so on. Um, and uh, yeah, all this stuff we will, we will go through time by time. And I will also, um, uh, people who know me already know that I uh, usually don't like to waste so much time in the beginning with, with theoretical introduction. I will just dive into the topic and then later um, we will cover all important theoretical parts uh, at the given time. Okay, so if you want to use um, Atlas software and you are a member of CERN, yeah, this is uh, in principle required, then uh, you can use any operating system, whichever you like to use. In this case, it's an Ubuntu based system actually. And you can uh, open a terminal. Yeah, in this case, I have just made it full screen and increased the font size. So it's easier for you to uh, watch what I'm doing. So now the thing which you have to do, you have to use SSH yeah, because we want to log in on a CERN machine. And then uh, we have to write LX plus dot CERN dot CH. Yeah? This is the, um, yeah, this is a system provided by CERN where you can access all um, different programs uh, that we want to use. Now at a given time, I will also explain a little bit more about that. If your username which you are, uh, which, with which you are registered with CERN is, does not match with the one uh, which you use on your local machine, you have to actually uh, give your username additionally and write at. And since we also want to forward X, because later we want to also see something, we have to insert here a minus Y or minus X. Okay, now we can uh, start that and it will ask you for your CERN password, which you have to type in. And if everything works well, you see this kind of message here, which shows that you are actually using now, uh, or you, you are actually accessing machine using CentOS Linux release 7.9. And that all the software which you use now has been compiled on this um, yeah, on this system. You can also use Athena on your local machine, for example, with the help of a Docker image. But this is a little bit complicated, and I will explain this at a later stage how to do that. For the time being, as I said, we only want to find out how to get access and how to run it. So, because my home folder is a little bit messy, I would like to create a new folder inside, which I call Tutorials. And uh, then I will go into that folder. And uh, yeah, now we want to simply create some data. So first of all, we have to access uh, Athena. And in order to do that, you can simply write here the command setup Atlas. Yeah, this is a script which is automatically setting all the environment variables, library paths, binary paths, and so on according to uh, according to the usage of uh, of Atlas software. So when you write setup Atlas and um, yeah, it, it's, it's working, then you can see now here that uh, it, it sets certain things here. For, for the moment, it's not so much interesting for us what actually happens there. So we just accept this and later I will explain the things in more detail. And the next thing, we have to get access to Athena. So for this, we have to write a setup uh, and then Athena. And then we can choose which branch we actually want to access. So in this case, I will use the latest one in the master branch, which is actually the always the most up to date one. If you want to use it for production, for example, for generation of particles, for simulation and so on, then there are certain branches which might work much better for you. But as I said, for the time being, just keep it simple. So we access the latest branch that is uh, the latest data, which is uh, pushed into the Athena repository. Yeah, and now we can actually start it. Yeah, and the first thing which you would like to do, of course, this is the first step which you have to do before reconstruction, before simulation, you have to generate particles. Yeah, 
And for that, there are certain packages included in Athena. For, oh, some of the packages I introduced already, for example, Puthia. This you can also see a tutorial on my, uh, on my YouTube channel. Um, however, um, it would be too complicated to, to use it directly. So people have thought about it, how to make it easy, and they wrote some Python wrappers around that. So Python scripts that we can use in order to make things a little bit easier. Yeah? These are the so-called drop transform uh, files. Okay, and the script that we want to use in order to generate particles uh, is called gentf for gen generating or generation transform or generating transform uh, dot pi. Yeah? Um, and uh, when you run this without any additional argument, you will see it gives you a lot of error messages because it does not simply know what to do. There are certain arguments that you have to pass and there are certain arguments which are optional. Yeah, so for example, um, if you just type in some wrong argument, then it uh, gives you a list of things that you can add. Uh, but if you don't want to do that because you know already what kind of uh, things we want to simulate, then uh, you can just follow what I am doing actually. So the first thing which I think is very important is that we choose the beam energy. Um, and in this case, I would like to set it to uh, 7000 uh, GeV uh, just for testing purposes. And um, I would also maybe limit the number of events that we want to simulate to 10, yeah, which will already take quite a long time. You can also set, of course, millions of events, but I think somehow it's also better to then separate it into different files. Um, not everything in one file. If it crashes, then the whole file is lost. Um, then, of course, we have to set the output file. Uh, in this case, we want to create a root file, which is called evnt. Um, so we have to write output evnt file, and then let's call that events.root, because we want to actually store the events inside that file. Uh, what we can also do in addition, maybe I can explain this now, is that we can create uh, a seed. Uh, for that, if we want to reproduce the results and get always the same results again and again, we can set a seed to maybe one, two, three, four, or anything like that. Um, if you don't do this, always a random seed is chosen, and then you cannot compare certain data sets. And then the last thing, which is the most important thing actually, is that you tell uh, Athena what types of particle you want to create. Uh, so in this case, uh, let's suppose you want to investigate some certain TT bar channels yeah? or some Higgs decays or something like that, then you have to know which kind of job config you have to insert. Um, in this case, I have done simulations using, for example, 421114. Um, and later, not now, because it would maybe exceed uh, yet the moment the amount of information which I want to give you, I will explain you then how to find out which kind of number you need or that there are also other possibilities to edit. But uh, as I said, for the time being, just follow what, I, what I'm doing, uh, reproduce this, and then let's see whether it also works on your system because we are doing it actually for testing purposes. So if I have not done any mistake until now, uh, it should work out of the box. So if I'm running the script now, it gives you a lot of output. Um, uh, maybe one can also reduce the amount of output that is actually created but uh, it's maybe also good to follow everything. Later, it will give you some ideas about uh, certain processes that are created, uh, like here, for example, uh, certain uh, um, cross sections in millibarn, uh, and you can see the output is very similar to Pythia. Yeah? So it actually access Pythia, as I have said before, if you want to know more about it, you can, um, you can access um, the, my tutorials on my YouTube channel about that. Um, but um, yeah, for the time being, we just see what, what happens actually. Uh, but of course, if, if you are familiar with that, you, you don't have to do it in such a way. You could also actually write your own program uh, that creates these EVNT files, but uh, it would be just useless to, to recreate something which is already there. Yeah? So we will stick to the things which, which are already existing. And uh, yeah, then um, later in, in the later stages, I will also explain how you can uh, use these generated particles for creating simulations with the atlas geometry how to reconstruct certain things and so on and then i will also explain you at a later stage how to actually write your own uh, athena packages how to um, add them to a locally forked repository how to use cmake and some certain filters in order to compile these packages 
and then later upload them, create some merge requests if you want to develop code, but um, all this will come later. For the time being, we will only stick to the production. Yeah, and after some time, you see that it has been created. Every test has been passed. 10 events have been created. Um, TRF transform exit code zero, which means everything worked well. Yeah. So now we can actually see what happens in this um, in this folder. A lot of things have been created. Uh, I think one of the most important thing which I'm usually checking is um, the file job report. Yeah, it's a, it's a JSON file actually, so you can use, for example, Vim to access this. And here it gives you some information about uh, certain things that have been created. Um, it should also give you information about the file which is created. And um, yeah, as you see, I have uh, just made a small mistake. It, instead of writing events, um, I forgot the E. Uh, but it also gives you some information about the file size and so on. Uh, yeah, this is uh, later for 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 um, if you want to go deeper into that. Uh, now to show that everything worked well, we will access now this file. Uh, sorry, uh, whence dot root, and um, yeah, this is just an ordinary root file. And when you use setup atlas, you also get access to root. And now you can use the standard T browser. Uh, which I have also explained in my tutorial about root actually, then uh, you can get access to, to the content of that file. Yeah? It is a little bit slow because you are actually f tunneling uh, through SSH, but uh, for the time being it should work. Yeah, when the file has somehow loaded and the display is, is uh, stable, then you can open that file and you can actually um, have a look at the collection tree, which collects the main data. Yeah. There are also other important trees in, included in that, but um, this we will discuss at a later stage. Yeah, then inside uh, you find here, for example, um, the so-called MC event collection, which you can also open with a double click. Then you find here um, mgen particles that you can also open with a double click actually. And yeah, and then here you see, for example, MPX, if you want to get access to the momentum in X direction. Yeah, this is giving you this very nice um, distribution. Normally you don't need to access these files because you use it then to make simulations with that and so on, but it's just a good idea to, to cross check what actually happens. Um, then you can also get further information about the particles, about the mass, about the uh, particle, uh, the PDG, code and so on, uh, actually everything which is written out by Putier. Yeah. But um, yeah, for, for the time being, I, I think I, sh I want to stop here because I don't want to put too much in, into, into the first video. Um, if you are interested in, in seeing more about that, please put it into the comment section. If you like the video, uh, then please hit the like button. Yeah. Uh, and if you don't want to miss any further video, please subscribe uh, my channel. And hopefully then see you very soon for a new video regarding uh, Atlas, software, Athena and so on.